Nearly a thousand scientists have slammed vegans as zealots for pushing no meat diets, arguing that it's crucial for a healthy lifestyle. Joining me now is nutritionist Monica Price and from Peter, Elisa Allen. Welcome to both of you. Um, Elisa, let's, let's start with you. I'm guessing you're going to say that uh, veganism and vegetarianism are not bad for your health. Uh, not not at all. Um, you know, I actually wanted to start off by mentioning that the particular study uh, that you mentioned, uh, it was published in a journal which is produced in collaboration with uh, the American Meat Science Association and other similar bodies who exist to promote the interest of the meat trade. Uh, so I am very glad that we're having this discussion today about the ethics and the health implications of eating meat, but um, I, I would very much take the findings of this one study with a pretty large grain of salt because um, taking dietary advice from this study is akin to taking medical advice from the cigarette industry. Uh, today, we know that um, leading medical boards all maintain that you can get all the nutrients that you need on a vegan diet. Uh, we have top athletes like Lewis Hamilton, who are not only surviving on a vegan diet, but thriving. Uh, I, I'm not a uh, top athlete myself, but I have been vegan for over 15 years. And by all accounts, I am happy, energetic um, and healthy. All right, well, let, let, let me bring Monica in because there are two points I want to put to Monica there. One is that this report almost isn't worth the paper it's written on, that it was backed by the meat industry and therefore, uh, as Elisa said, should be taken uh, with a pinch of salt. And the second is that vegans can be healthy. But I suppose the question is, I think we probably all assume that vegans can be healthy, but are vegans healthy is a different question. Yes, absolutely, Daisy. It, the thing is, I mean, it's like any study, there's always going to be studies, it's like the yin and the yang. For every study that says one thing, there's going to be another study that comes out and says the opposite. The thing with this study is something that, as a nutritionist, that I'm already seeing, which is the deficiency in B12. Now, B12 is something that can only be found in meat and dairy produce. So it's something that if you're a vegan, you would know about and you're either taking a supplement or you are having fortified foods, which means that it's having um, B12 added to it. So things like um, milk, plant-based milk, and uh, breakfast cereals all have this added. And the thing is with this study, it's like any study, I'm a meat eater, um, but when you're a vegan, it's a way of life, Daisy, it's a lifestyle. And for the you know the lady that's joined us here, um, she will understand that. It, when you're a vegetarian, it's completely different. But when you, when you become a vegan, you strip so much out of your diet that your diet is solely plant-based, which if you don't have a good understanding of what these vitamins are doing for your body and how essential they are, particularly the B12, then, you, then that's when you start getting deficiency. And at the moment, what we're seeing is an increase in deficiency, and particularly in the elderly and particularly in the young, because not so many of those um, people are eating meat. And, and there's nothing wrong with eating meat. It's, it's like everything is everything in moderation. If you decide to go vegan, then you have to have a really good knowledge and understanding of what you need to eat to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And it's all very well mentioned in Lewis Hamilton, where he's got top nutritionists, he'll have he have people cooking for him. That's not the everyday average vegan. Um, so the everyday average vegan will be will be looking specifically for specific foods for them. And unfortunately, unless you have a good understanding of what you need to eat, then there's, you're likely to be deficient. Elisa, I think that is the crucial point, isn't it? It's as Monica says, the everyday average vegan isn't getting as much goodness out of their diet as potentially the everyday average meat eater. Well, I would consider myself the everyday average vegan. And as I said, I'm by all accounts um, healthy, energetic and, and happy. I mean, I think the key here is a healthy, balanced diet, which regardless what diet you're on, I think we can all agree that um, that's necessary. And for a vegan diet, it means um, getting those whole foods, fruits, vegetables, pulses, grains, nuts, seeds. Um, for me, of course, I, I'm vegan. Um, for, for ethical reasons, for animals. And I believe that if we can get 
uh, if we can eat in a way that nourishes us, and vegans can eat in a way that nourishes us, but that doesn't involve harming or killing animals, why wouldn't we do that? Of course, um, but, but, and, but Elise, you know that that argument is completely different from the nutrition argument. And that is a, a choice, it's an ethical choice, and it's something that, of course, you know, everybody would say you have every right uh, to have those morals and those ethics and to, to eat accordingly. But specifically, this report that we're discussing mm -hmm. is about the nutritional benefits or not of eating meat? Well, I, I think, you know, again, you can be, um, of, of course, a vegan diet is not the cure-all. Uh, you can um, be vegan and eat Greg's vegan sausage rolls, which are delicious, uh, but unless you're supplementing that with plenty of, uh, of whole foods and grains and vegetables and fruits, you're probably not going to have the healthiest of lifestyle. Um, but, you know, it is worth remembering that many people are vegan, um, because again, they can get all of the nutrients that they need on a vegan diet, but they're vegan because uh, it helps animals, it spares them from a lifetime of suffering. Um, and they're vegan because we're in the midst of a climate emergency and animal agriculture. I, I just, I just want to stick. I just want to stick to the nutrition um, elements of it uh, for the mm -hmm. time being. And Monica, you were talking about B12 deficiency. What does yes. it mean if you have a B12 deficiency? Well, the thing is with all the B vitamins are kind of like, egg. We, I say that I describe them as egg keys to unlocking our energy. So B12, though, is particularly important. It's a very, very important vitamin um, to unlock our energy, but it's particularly important for our nervous system. And it's also particularly important to, to our red blood cells. They enter our body and then that gives us oxygen. Obviously, that goes around our body and that gives us lots of energy. When someone is B12 deficient, they will become very tired, um, very lethargic have no energy they can sometimes have blood vision and you know we and the, the problem is is that people are trying these vegan diets and probably maybe just for ethical reasons but what they don't understand is that nutritional value in some of the foods they're having just doesn't equate to what your body needs and that's where the problem is and if you've got something like Crohn's disease or some kind of pancreatic disease or even diabetes then your stomach acid is reduced which will mean that your your vitamin storage particularly of B vitamins which are the ones that we need particularly but particularly the B12 and I emphasize that because this is the one that's, that all vegans will know is found in meat and dairy produce which of course they don't eat so you know if they're not getting out of that and and you're a diabetic in particular well the news report we've just seen we've got an unprecedented rise in diabetes in this country so i i can tell you that people are deficient so it is a lifestyle and yes there is an environmental climate issue with it but no less than there is of, of soy soy is a mainstay of, of a vegan diet it's a very very high protein plant-based food well, you know the 80 percent of the 80% of the, um, you know, the plant-based food that, that someone would have would be soy. And that's that's produced, you know, globally oh, around the Monica, world. Monica, I'm going to have to draw this discussion to a close. I'm so sorry, sorry. and apologies to Elisa too. I think we did cover a lot of ground there. Clearly there are arguments uh, on both sides. Clearly veganism is very fashionable at the moment but you do need to invest in some of those supplements if that's the line you're going to go down to. Many thanks to both of you 